Hello everyone and welcome to the Clinical Trials Project Management Series provided by the Case Western Reserve Clinical Translational Science Collaborative. This series will be presented across four modules, starting with today's module, What is Project Management? Modules two and three will provide details about the role of the project manager across the project's life cycle from initiation through closure. Finally, module four will provide details on resources to support clinical trials project managers and their teams, which are made available by the Case Western Reserve University Clinical Translational Science Collaborative. Our objectives for today are to explain what project management is, the benefits of using a clinical trials project manager, and how that role integrates into the research team. Let's start with an overview of what project management is. To understand the role of a project manager, we need to understand what constitutes a project. A project is defined as a temporary endeavor with a beginning and an end, and it must be used to create a unique product, service, or result. Clearly, a clinical trial is a project. It begins with protocol development and ends with data analysis and results reporting. Project management is a discipline used to effectively plan and execute projects. Project managers provide temporary leadership specific to the project, leveraging their knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to successfully achieve project objectives. Although a project manager may be involved in the project from inception through closeout, we think of them as temporary because they may only facilitate certain aspects of the project, and their support may not extend to all of the department's projects. The primary role of the clinical trials project manager is to see the big picture and use that foresight to develop the project plan and manage constraints. I like the imagery of this photo of a forked river. The project manager needs to know where the fork in the river sits on the landscape, so they're prepared to steer the ship in the right direction to avoid going down the wrong stream and creating delays and duplicating efforts. As the ship's captain, providing direction to the team allows them to focus on their tasks and understand how they contribute to the desired result. The project manager needs to work with the team to create understanding of where are we now, where do we need to be, and how are we going to get there? A clinical trials project manager is responsible for planning and executing the clinical trial by leading the team and organizing the work required to conduct the trial according to the protocol and applicable regulations and policies. A clinical trials project manager needs to have a wealth of experience in all aspects of clinical trials and should ideally have project management experience. This can be obtained as any combination of real world experience and training and educational opportunities in the field and project management certification. It is absolutely critical for a project manager to have excellent communication skills. To be successful, the project manager must be able to clearly communicate with all members of the study team, as well as key stakeholders regarding project status, tasks, and the plan for meeting each milestone. They must be prepared to provide mentorship in education, coaching, and document the team's activities to keep them accountable and focused on completing critical tasks. The project manager must leverage their knowledge of clinical trials to implement processes that are appropriate to the workflow to ensure that the trial is conducted efficiently and in compliance with federal regulations and local policies and procedures. For example, if you were working on a clinical trial that required an IND from the FDA, Knowing whether the IND needs to be in effect before submitting to the IRB is important to establishing the workflow for study startup. They must also be resourceful and seek education and resources on anything unfamiliar so they can apply that context to the work. The primary challenge of any project manager is to achieve project goals within the given constraints. Time, cost, and scope are referred to as the primary or triple constraints to project management. Other constraints may include risk management or limited resources. The clinical trials project manager should identify project constraints from the beginning and reevaluate for new constraints or changes to existing constraints throughout the project life cycle. This knowledge is important for planning ahead and identifying potential obstacles so that solutions can be implemented before they create roadblocks wherever possible. So what is the big picture? The team. Who's on the team and what are they responsible for? Does their knowledge and experience set them up for success or do they need support? If so, who or what do they need to be successful? Do we have all the necessary roles and tasks covered? Stakeholders. 
who are our stakeholders? They're the people, departments, and organizations who are impacted by our study. The PI, department managers, and leadership, team members, CRU, funding source, IRB, FDA are prime examples. Stakeholders may change in importance as the project moves through its life cycle. For example, the IRB may not be immediately involved in a study while the protocol is being written, but if you don't consider their needs early in the project, you may experience delays because changes need to be made to get the study approved. Understanding how all of these stakeholders relate to each other is another key to success. Scope. Consider both the scope of each team member's role as well as the overall scope of the project. What is or isn't included in what we need to accomplish for the study? Are the tasks assigned to each team member appropriate to their role? Risk. When you think project manager, think risk manager. Risk management is a huge part of the CTPM's role, and assessment and mitigation cycle continuously throughout all stages of the project. When considering risk, we need to think about what could go wrong, can it be prevented, and how, and if it happens anyway, how will we fix it? Everyone needs to contribute their knowledge and perspective. Milestones and time. There are three definitions related to how we achieve our project objectives that you need to know. Milestones, deliverables, and tasks. Milestones are the big ticket items that our objectives are built on. Deliverables are the tangible items that are needed in order to achieve project milestones. Tasks are the baby steps that need to be done in order to complete the deliverable. We need to establish our milestones, deliverables, and what tasks are necessary to achieve them. For example, if IRB approval is a milestone, then the deliverable is completing the application and a task would be answering the questions on the form. All of these revolve around communication as a central theme. Everyone needs to know what's happening with the project. This should be a combination of written and face-to-face -face communication. Meeting agendas and minutes help everyone feel prepared for the meeting and serve as an important reference for the team. Detail what's going on with each action item, who is the person responsible for that piece, and what was decided as next steps. Now, let's talk about the benefits of using a clinical trial project manager. Let's look at a case study to illustrate how a clinical trials project manager contributed to the success of a research study. The investigators were awarded a multi-year NIH grant to just study a newly developed pet drug that had not yet been tested in humans. Since the study involved an investigational product that was not FDA approved, an investigational new drug application was required. The department conducting the study was small, an administrator, manager, and two study coordinators, and none of them had expertise with INDs. I'm sure that you know the old adage, fast, good, or cheap. Choose two, you can't have all three. Fast, good, and cheap is the unicorn in the center of this Venn diagram. So we have our three constraints. We need to conduct a clinical trial within the time frame and budget of the NIH grant. The time and cost constraints are going to prevent the study team from being able to invest both the time and therefore money into learning how to manage an IND and sponsor responsibilities. What are the risks if the team moves forward in their current state? They don't know what they don't know, which is highly likely to lead to non-compliance with federal regulations as well as internal policies and procedures. We have to do the right thing by our trial participants. Their rights, safety, and well-being need to remain at top of mind. Messing up and having to redo things is going to take more time, which we don't have because the grant has both start and stop dates. Plus, if we get selected for an FDA inspection, if we don't know what we need to do, we'll miss requirements and get a warning letter. This cartoon is about banking regulations, but I think that it hits the mark on how investigators and their teams feel about IND regulations as well. It's a tangled knot that's difficult to unravel. If we can't conduct the study and meet the objectives of the grant, our NIH funding is at risk. We may have to repay the award and we will have damaged our institutional reputation with NIH. I'm sure you're ready to solve the puzzle. It's probably pretty obvious, like this lucky contestant on Wheel of Fortune. We need a project manager, specifically one with expertise in sponsor investigator INDs. How did our pet radio tracer project benefit by having a CTPM? Having someone who is an expert on sponsor investigator INDs alleviated the risks of not knowing what we don't know. The CTPM was able to educate the team on what they needed to know about INDs for their role 
and was able to provide key insight on institutional policies around this kind of study. This helped everyone understand the order of operations, as well as how their role fit into the big picture. By working closely with the team, roadblocks to progress became apparent, and the CTPM was able to work with the team to find a solution. In this case, the investigators were struggling to find time in their schedules to work on the scientific documents the IND required. The CTPM was able to find time with the investigators to have working meetings one hour every week. By communicating with key stakeholders, they were able to maintain the support and momentum the project needed to move forward, as well as coordinate the efforts of the overall team. Finally, let's take a look at how the project manager role fits in with the research team. The roles and tasks that each study needs fulfilled in order to be successful vary greatly, and the CTPM may step in to fulfill any of these which support the investigator. Where and how they fit into the team may be dependent on the size of the team, the phase of the project, and or the scope of their role as the project manager. Here we have an example of a small project team to demonstrate the relationships between each role. The PI is the leader of the team. The research manager supports the PI by overseeing research operations, supervised personnel, financial management, navigating departmental and institutional procedures. The research coordinator reports to the research manager and is responsible for bringing the protocol to life, so to speak. They may manage the site regulatory file, recruit and consent study participants, manage IRB correspondence, collect and enter data, or all of the above. Notice the dotted lines from the CTPM to everyone else. The CTPM may report up through a completely different department in the organization, but there is still that responsibility to leverage the collaborative and organizational nature of their role to lead and inform all of these other positions. Each role supports the other. As the big picture champion, the project manager needs to liaise with stakeholders and tap into resources to ensure that the study has all of the elements necessary for success. Here is an example of how three key stakeholders fit into our study team organization. The CTPM has a responsibility to engage these stakeholders to both ensure continued support for the study, but also to tap into key resources like those provided by the institution's clinical research unit. CTPMs are often brought on board for unique or especially complex studies, and so assessing central resources for clinical trial operations that are available from the CRU extends the study team's capabilities. The project manager's unique big picture perspective makes them the perfect liaison for making this connection. The scope of the project manager's role may be defined in part by where the project is in the life cycle when they join the team. Regardless of when they join, the CTPM will use the tools and techniques discussed in the first three modules of this course to meet study objectives. If the project manager is part of the team from the beginning, they'll be part of establishing workflows and processes from the beginning, enhancing the team's efficiency from the get-go. If they join the team after study startup, they'll work with the team to get perspective on what is working well, what areas need improvement, and what is missing from the project to get it back on track. This is a collaborative effort. Everyone contributes to the study's operations, quality, compliance, and efficiency. Let's take a look at how the roles of the CTPM and the research coordinator differed on our case study. This study team decided to divide responsibilities based on what fell under the sponsor versus what fell under the investigator. The study team felt confident in how to support the PI in his role as the investigator and sought the CTPM to support his IND sponsor responsibilities. The CTPM took on everything under that sponsor umbrella starting with the FDA communication, like the initial IND application and all of the maintenance processes. The research coordinator took on everything under the investigator umbrella, like IRB correspondence. Throughout, the CTPM kept a watchful eye on how the study was progressing, anticipated the needs, and managed risks. Let's review the key takeaways from today's module. A project is a temporary endeavor with a beginning and end that provides a service, product, or result. Project management is the discipline of planning and executing projects. The project manager is the person responsible for planning and executing the project. To be successful, clinical trial project managers need to have a wealth of clinical trials and project management experience, excellent oral and written communication skills, and be resourceful. A CTPM may be the puzzle piece that the study is missing. 
A CTPM can bridge a team's knowledge or skills gaps on a variety of study processes to successfully execute the trial. The team will benefit from their view of the big picture to navigate project constraints and avoid roadblocks. The CTPM role is integrated into the study team. The exact role the CTPM will fulfill depends on the needs of the study and the team. Each role on the team supports the other and all are critical to the study's success. Thank you so much for joining us for module one of the CTPM series. Please join us for module two, where we will learn about two phases of the project management life cycle, the initiation assessment and planning phases.